G'day YouTubers, Nervous Neuron here. I promised this video last year and well here you are next year watching it. Better late than never as the cliche goes. Well here it goes. The neuroscience of lucid dreaming. You just sit down because I know you are standing up in amazement at this video so sit down and you're gonna start learning stuff. You're gonna learn how do scientists study lucid dreaming? How do scientists get people lucid dreaming? And what goes on in the brain when you are having a lucid dream? I'm telling you, the brain does some pretty cool shit, but dreaming, personally, I think, is on the top there. And lucid dreaming, you don't need to do LSD, you just go to sleep and dream. Pretty cool. Alright, so let's get stuck into this thing. Interest in lucid dreaming was fairly low until about July 2010. Then people were over it fairly soon. Well, the movie Inception premiered, which uh, the plot was based on travelling through dream worlds and more so cool. And the closest thing in reality to that is lucid dreaming. Uh, this spike in spur uh, search terms, search terms, it's actually quite similar to the pattern of Searching Inception, the movie. So from this, we gather it's just a bunch of people wanting to know about uh, the movie Inception, really, and how you can do it in real life. Except uh, people are more interested in the movie than lucid dreaming. And of course, the Italians. So this one is for you guys who aren't over lucid dreaming and th still think it's pretty awesome. Personally, lucid dreaming is really interesting to me, as well as just dreaming in general. What gets me about dreaming is, why are we unaware that we're dreaming in the first place? I mean, the weirdest shit happens and you don't even question it. Sounds a little like psychosis to me. I mean, is it possible to study lucid dreaming to find the neural mechanisms for psychiatric lucidity? Can we find a system in the brain that separates us um, from reality? Can we find a system in the brain that is separating us from reality, forcing us to believe everything it tells us is true? Could these mechanisms be the same for psychosis, especially delusions? A scientist who is well known for studying lucid dreaming, um, his name's Le Burge, I think that's how you pronounce it, notes that there are degrees of delirium, which is the opposite of lucidity, uh, in a psychiatric sense. Lucidity is kind of like awareness. Um, and then because of that, there must be degrees of lucidity. A lucid dream is not an all or nothing phenomenon. As if you've had a lucid dream, you've probably experienced, it's not just, oh, hey, I'm dreaming, I know this. Sometimes you might still believe in some of the delusions, like you don't want to hurt any of your dream friends, even though you know they're a figment of your, um, your, <laughs> you don't want to hurt your dream friends, even though you know they're a figment of your imagination, but you don't really understand this. I mean, that was funny, because I read that after, uh, a YouTuber called Jack Highland uh, linked me to a YouTube channel, uh, to a guy called Reese who talks about lucid dreaming, check it out. Uh, and he posed basically five layers of lucid dreaming, starting with layer zero, where kind of you're dreaming about having lucid dreams, but you're not really having a true lucid dream. Um, to layer five, where uh, you realize that you are dreaming and you're able to have full control of your dream. Now the neuroscience we have on just plain dreaming itself is very weak, let alone lucid dreaming. While there are he um, heaps of theories, actually there is not that many theories out there, we barely know the reason for why we dream. Lucid dreaming is also very difficult to study. Forget test tubes, forget animal studies. Firstly, to study something in a scientific sense, you need to be able to reliably induce it in the lab. As a side note, that's also <laughs> a problem with studying supernatural phenomena. Not because we don't believe in it, but because you can't induce, like, I don't know, out-of-body experiences in the lab. Therefore, it can't be observed and measured. Uh, studies of dreaming and sleep are studied in specialised sleep laboratories. 
people come to these labs, they have a little sleepover, and they're hooked up with a lot of little instruments which take some physiological measures. We know a lot about sleep architecture, that is basically the stages of sleep that we cycle through. Uh, this is done through research at sleep labs. Stages of sleep, such as rapid eye movement, are able to be measured and quantified using a technique called polysomnography. 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 I like that word. I like polysomnography. This includes EG, which measures the electrical activity of the brain, EOG to measure the eye movements, and E. MG on the chin to measure electrical activity in the muscle or basically when the muscles are moving that's what it detects. These three parameters are enough to be able to identify what stage of sleep somebody is in. For example during REM sleep uh, which is rapid eye movement sleep there are eye movements, uh, low muscle activity due to sleep paralysis uh, in the brain, there are low amplitude but high frequency brain waves. Don't worry too much about this, but what it means is there is a lot of brain activity happening, but the brain activity is happening at low power. Um, this suggests that the brain cells and neurons are firing all over the place, and this is similar to what happens at waking. And this all makes sense, of course, if you know how brain cells talk to each other normally. So the complete opposite happens during deep non-REM sleep. You have um, basically low frequency and high amplitude, so there's um, a lot of high power, um, but less activity. And this happens because the neurons start to fire together in synchrony. Uh, there's no eye movements, but there's activity in the muscle. It's, you know, you're not having a seizure but uh, a little bit of twitch here and there now if you didn't get a word of what the fuck I was on about uh, click on this link to learn a little bit about sleep architecture because this is what the video is supposed to be about it's supposed to be about lucid dreaming however lucid dreaming is difficult to observe because spontaneous lucid dreaming is really rare I mean I uh, did a survey on this shit, um, some German people, only 50% of the, oh, I think 900 or so people surveyed, even had just one lucid dream, so that's how rare it is. So, <laughs> the chance that you get one participant in the sleep lab that happens to lucid dream is really low. So, what scientists had to actually do is to induce lucid dreaming. Uh, so, to do that, they train people to become lucid in their dreams. Not only that, that's not good enough. You have to be able to get these people who are having a lucid dream to signal to the experimenters to say, oh, I'm having a lucid dream now, this is awesome. It was Keith Hearn and uh, later on, Stephen Leberge, that are the blokes credited for bringing lucid dreaming into the lab. Uh, Stephen Leberge was able to train people uh, to have a lucid dream. And after training them, he was able to get them to signal by making some kind of eye movement at the onset of lucid dreaming, some kind of code that they uh, worked out beforehand. I haven't personally experienced this myself, but apparently um, you still have control over your eyes. People can be trained to lucid dream uh, with various techniques. A common one takes advantage of the way we incorporate external stimuli into our dreams. Uh, for example, like in reality, in reality, <laughs> an alarm clock goes off and also it happens in your dream. Or instead, it becomes a bomb about to blow and die. So one lab in Germany, uh, the Voss Group, I'll call them, trained 20 psych undergrads to induce lucid dreams. Out of these 20 participants, six were able to have lucid dreams for more than three times a week for four months. So that's already, we've gone from 20 psych undergrads learning to lucid dream, and then six were able to do this three times a week uh, within the four months training period. 
So these guys were invited into the sleep lab for physiological recordings, as discussed before. And basically, it's just basic. Uh, <laughs> Basically, it was just basic polysomnography that was like basic, like basic, basic. Yeah, it was basic, like visual basic. Okay, basically, fuck. I need a thesaurus to replace the word basically here. So basically what these blokes and Sheila's, I don't know the gender of everyone else in the group, wanted to do was basically to look at the polysomnography recordings and to see how similar they are to the other stages of sleep uh, which are REM and the four stages of non-REM sleep um, so they can look on their recordings uh, whether, whether um, participants became lucid because you can see on the eye tracer uh, that they made the signal and in this experiment uh, three out of the six achieved lucidity, so I've gone down from 20 to 3 now. <laughs> so really, if you know anything about statistics, we're going to have to take this data with a grain of salt. But I think they get bonus points, because this really is a difficult study to pull off, to actually get people lucid dreaming, record their brain activity. So what they did is they also got brain activity from different brain regions instead of the overall thing. Uh, the limitation of doing this sort of thing is you really only get measurements from the cortex because that's the part of the brain closest to your head. Uh, but really, it's a bit better than trying to measure the bumps on your head at least. So during wake, there is a higher activity towards the front of the brain. And during sleep, this activity slows down a bit. I bet you can guess what happened during lucid dream. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. Common sense science. Wow, big results. Awesome. It's neuroscience of lucid dreaming right here. We found it somewhere in the middle of sleep and wake. All right, wait, wait, wait. I've got more. Don't worry. Don't stress. But this group made some um, interesting observations on this. Basically, they found that the brain goes from REM sleep towards the waking state, but without actually waking up. So when dreaming, uh, there is the dream delusions going on and everything seems normal. This could be caused by the brain circuits needed for self-awareness and insight being shut off during sleep. So that's how you get sucked into the dream delusions. But in a lucid dream, these are slowly becoming activated as you go towards the waking state. So they described it as a lucid dreamer is um, on the edge of sleeping and on the edge of waking. Now, a few videos ago, I complained that eh, I'm always waking up in a lucid dream. It's so stupid. Uh, so then this YouTuber called uh, Rollie's a Jackass, I think, uh, suggested that the reason that we tend to wake up after a lucid dream is not because, oh my god, the excitement of a lucid dream causes the waking up, but... The waking up process is actually what's causing the lucid dream. It's really hard to say what is actually going on in reality, but science seemed to be leaning towards jackasses' idea. Who thought jackasses would be good for anything? I don't know. They are now. This might explain why flashing lights, uh, which they use to train people to lucid dream, uh, may help induce them. Uh, not enough to completely wake the person, but perhaps enough to wake the reality checker um, or the self-awareness or insight circuits in the brain. I mean, I don't know if this is true because the purpose of incorporating this stimuli like the light hasn't been to arouse the person, <laughs> but actually to prompt a reality checker. So if they see a red light, anytime reality dreaming, they ask themselves, hey, am I dreaming? That's supposed to be the intended purpose. So I don't know. Now, this uh, reality checker, I believe, may be located in a part of the brain called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. By the sounds of this, this part of the brain is like really in the front, front, front brain. Because <laughs> that's what it is like in Latin, the front, front, front cortex. Okay, whatever. Uh, this area is pretty much disactivated during sleep. During REM sleep, the other prefrontal areas wake up, but this one seems to remain deactivated for some reason. And as we wake up, this part of the brain is 
the last to wake up. Now, in order for a lucid dream to happen, it may be that for some reason, this part of the brain, this uh, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, might decide to wake up, um, and the the um, parts of the brain that regulate arousal that are keeping you asleep, like the brainstem, uh, keep you sleeping, so you're having a lucid dream. You're awake, but um, you're not awake. Now, this hasn't been done before, but um, in order to test the theory, we can put someone in a PET scanner. Uh, it's basically a brain scanner which measures what's going in your your brain real time and wait for them to have a lucid dream to see if this area is active <laughs> but really this would be heinously expensive because we can train people to have a lucid dream right uh, but we can't make them do it on command just like that because in Voss's study he got 3 out of 20 participants to have a lucid dream under observation I mean I suppose what you could do is instead of having this uh, PET scanner running all night to watch the brain start a lucid dream, uh, just have him in the brain scanner, give the eye signal, then turn on this expensive machine and go for it. Actually, hmm, pretty good idea. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm sure as technology improves, we'll get their answer on this. Now, if it just happened to be as simple as this dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex awakening while the rest of your brain sleeps, all we have to do to induce lucid dreaming is to somehow wake this area up. I don't know how you do this without waking up the rest of the brain. This possibly could be done with, uh, say, trans uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation. One's that? Free lucid dreaming. By the sounds of this, I don't think it's as easy as I think it is. Alright, let's conclude this thing. Really, not much work has been done on this area. Most of this work has been done by LaBerge just on establishing um, how to get people lucid dreaming in a lab and just the characteristics of people that lucid dream or whatever the hell. Not much about the actual neuroscience, what actually goes on in the brain. The best study that I found on the actual neuroscience was this Voss uh, German study, but they got three participants. Uh, really, I mean, what the results they got could have been just luck. I mean, they do sound pretty common sense anyway. The rest of the research I mentioned has... Knowing what brain region does what, we can make hypothesis on what might be going on, but we don't have any concrete evidence on it. Once we are able to more reliably induce lucid dreaming, I believe the research in this area might explode. Might explode, but we'll only get so far. But I personally believe the implications of studying lucid dreaming is more wide-reaching than we think it is. First of all, we can actually understand consciousness and how we might actually recognise reality and even perhaps how we're self-aware. With self-awareness, you've got um, a lot of ethics research in there. Could you find other animals that are self-aware? I mean, this mirror bullshit they do is just crap. Imagine finding the neural correlate of self-awareness. I'm still intrigued by the fact that we actually lose our awareness in a dream. This is something that most people take for granted. I mean, you want disorders? Drug companies, you want disorders? You want a cure shit? Imagine if you could find the reality checker in the brain and target that shit with drugs. I mean, goodbye delusions, goodbye hallucinations. Start studying dreaming and lucid dreaming, folks. That's where it's happening. Thank you very much for watching. Please, uh, thumb me. Or thumb me. I don't care. Actually, yes, I do. Two thumbs for me. Uh, put a comment, ask questions and stuff. Uh, so I can get more attention. Because I like that kind of stuff. What do you think on the neuroscience of lucid dreaming? What brain regions or neurotransmitters or brain systems do you think might be involved? Post your comment below um, if you have references and stuff. That would be great. Uh, what do you think about the uh, What do you think about the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex? Do you think that's a good candidate for uh, the sight of lucid dreaming, uh, or would it be multiple brain regions? What do you reckon? Post. Thanks, guys. See you later.